meeting. And uh, first agenda item is open forum. Commission members have anything for open forum? Mm -mm. No? Uh, just one thing I know at the uh, during open forum last meeting I know Marilyn brought up about the number of scout projects that had been done uh, for town properties. Um, I'm in the since that meeting did a little research um, going back to when I started in town so two and a half years um, there's been 14 scout projects on nice. uh, conservation owned lands conservation restrictions um, a couple you know uh, there was the one on the school property another footbridge on school property but um, that's well we'll be working on that and I'll keep updating as but two Does and a half years 14 Girl scouts hmm? include the Girl Scouts yep the yep. bat boxes the kind of public awareness pet loss prevention mm. the footbridges out on the Akerdeen to Silver Trail so uh, yeah, I. There's been a lot in the last two, two, two and yeah, a half years. I think it would be nice at some point to do a shout out to them in some way, you know, whether there's a letter of acknowledgement, you know, from us or a little certificate that we give or something, something to. I've been seeing um, notices. Uh, I think it was in the town manager's report or some somebody that that there's a scout that's come trying to write the history of scouting in Westford. Uh, I didn't yeah. see that. Well, that would be something they might be. Uh, hmm. See if I can find it. Yeah, maybe you yeah. know. Okay, good to go. Uh, yep. All right, we'll move on to Thanks for looking into that, Matt. Agenda Matt. item for a public hearing on New England Power Company. It's a legal notice of Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, Wetlands Protection Act, Wetlands Non Zoning Wetlands Bylaw, Chapter 171. Western Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, December 22nd, 2021, at 7 30 p.m. in meeting room 201 at Town Hall, 55 Main Street, on the notice of 10 application of Andrew Cole, New England Power Company, for activities associated with exploratory geotech technical soil borings along the uh, 337 transmission line right away with 100 feet of bordering vegetated wetlands, 100 feet of border land subject to flooding and riverfront area along the K137 transmission lines from Littleton Town Line to the Chelmsford Town Line along the New England Power Company's right of way easement over multiple parcels. Welcome. Allison Melman. I'm from BSA Group, and I'm here on behalf of Andrew Cole of New England Power Company. I'm here tonight to present to you the soil borings project um, that was just uh, uh, dis um, the whole notice was just read. Um, the purpose of the soil borings is to look at subsurface characteristics along the right of way at the existing transmission structure locations uh, for the expectation that there will be some future maintenance work, which will involve replacement of those of those structures. Um, each soil boring itself is about four to six inches in diameter. Um, and they, they do the work typically with uh, a piece of equipment that's kind of like the size of a John Deere tractor. Um, they also have a pickup truck that they will bring the, their, their boring water in with them uh, on the back of. And that's, that's the, uh, the extent of the equipment that will be out on the right of way. Um, when they need to access, since the, the transmission line does cross multiple resource areas, you know, in the, the existing structures are located within those resource areas. They'll have to use um, some best management practices to cross the wetland resources um, on the right of way. They typically will use the temporary timber matting, construction mats. Um, those are placed down. Alternatively, because the the scale and scope of the work is pretty minor and the equipment's not very heavy, if the if it's frozen conditions or we have a um, a wetland that's not um, you know deep or uh, very soft organic soils, sometimes they'll use the plastic mats or composite mats um, to, to access those areas with the equipment. Um, there we do have uh, work within natural heritage areas that we did receive our letter. Did you receive a copy of that? I have not, so if you could forward that along. That okay, that, um, that the work in habitat uh, you know, is exempt um, and therefore no adverse impact is anticipated from the soil boring activities. Um, in addition, national uh, New England Power does have um, an operation maintenance plan. So whenever we do any work on the right of way in habitat, we adhere to that plan regardless of the of the, of the type of work. Um, so I would just like to kind of do a quick page turn through the mapping, if that's okay, Matt. Certainly. Okay. Uh, the first map is the U.S. Well, there's two USGS maps, basically showing where the the transmission line runs through the town of Westford. Um, and also there's point locations here that show, you know, there's three lines associated with this transmission line. They'll be doing borings, you know, at a majority of the structures 
on all, all three of lines at certain locations. Um, we do have um, access points that are shown on, on our plans. Um, all access will be coming off of the public roadways where the, the you know the right of way basically crosses those. There's existing gates. Matt, and a lot you want to give her the pointer? Oh, yeah. And the uh, yellow button is the laser pointer. Thank you. Thank you. Um, am I doing this right? Yep, it's up. There, oh, there it is. There you go. Um, so this is this shows like an existing gate. Um, the yellow line here shows like a, the proposed access route. Um, that they'll be coming in off of the public roads to get to these locations. Um, this, the actual soil boring, proposed soil borings are shown with these kind of maroon colored dots here. And then the existing structure locations are the adjacent, um, more like a dark red kind of color that are next to them. Um, so you can see that the, the purpose and intent is really just to you know, sample basically at, you know, for future replacement activities at, at where these structures are located. Um, this is an example where we have a wetland with a structure immediately adjacent to it. So this cross hatch area shown right here is where if, if they do need to get equipment onto the backside to complete the soil boring, they'll place those, those matting, the matting I was discussing, um, and that's permitted for that um, temporary impacts and they're disclosed within your um, narrative and cover letter. I think we're, at this town, I think we have about 88,000 square feet and that's worst case scenario. A lot of times they, especially a situation like this, they'll, they'll try to avoid having to place the mats and they'll just work on the upland side of the soil boring. Um, you probably go down to the next page. This is, um, let's see, Butterfield Lane, um, similar situation. We have the existing access route shown. Um, you know, for the most part, this right away actually has some pretty good um, existing access routes that, that they can use to gain access to these soil borings. Um, next page, please. Um, this is a large wetland complex associated with Beaver Brook. Uh, fortunately, we don't need to have any access uh, within this, this wetland. Um, but we do have the riverfront associated with it, so the temporary impact from the access and the, um, the boring, so they'll have to do some mowing here um, to gain access if the, the vegetation is thick. Um, and then we have the temporary impact from the boring location. This is the riverfront. I think, I mean, I could do, a, if, if there's certain locations that folks are interested in, we can look at that. Um, but I think I've kind of described the scope of work for the most part, um, it, it, unless there's any specific questions or things you want me to discuss. Sure. Uh, I have one question. You, it sure. says in your notice of intent, and you've repeated tonight, that the purpose for these borings is for future maintenance. Yes. Are you planning to, uh, is this a replacement or plan to replace uh, wooden uh, creosote poles with steel structures and concrete, or is it? Some other maintenance is in just like replacing wood poles with wood poles or, or what? Okay, so the, this notice of intent is for the soil borings, but I will say right. that um, the trend with the utility infrastructure and the transmission line infrastructure is to move away from the wood poles Good. and okay. go towards the steel poles for several reasons. The wood poles, you know, obviously they have that. Um, the or whatever. They, they have the yeah. chemical treat, treatment on them. They don't last as long. They're not as reliable. We have a lot of problems with deterioration and woodpecker holes um, and things of that nature, insect damage. Um, and the steel is, is just more reliable in the long run. It's gonna, it has a longer lifespan. So that's your um, long-term uh, approach or that's, goal? That's, that's basically how all, this, all these, these projects that, have that's been That's why you're doing towards. these. Okay. All right. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, yeah. When I was reading through when it was talking about the mats you might put down if you need um, to get access over certain types of soils, I'm assuming these are mats that have been used elsewhere, and I'm wondering if I'm, I'm not, it's not clear in my mind what they're made of or, or stuff. My concern would be if they were used someplace else, is there a possibility that they carry in um, plant seeds from other locations and potentially invasive seeds? That's an excellent question. Um, so we, you know, the plastic mats that probably don't, they don't, uh, material doesn't stick to them that much. When you're using those timber mats, um, which, you know, in the larger wetland, the deeper wetlands, they may need to use the bigger, thicker mats. Um, they do have that issue. Um, New England Power, we ha they have an environmental guidance document that also includes um, a certification form that contractors are required to sign that the, all their mats and their equipment arrives on site clean. Um, and they also are required, if they're going to use reuse mats other places in the right of way, that they have to certify that they've cleaned the mats. Mm -hmm. um, typically, what they'll do is either use like a, a, 
a push broom and, and you know if there's any kind of visible material like um, vegetative material or clumps of dirt they'll sweep it off there or they can use compressed air mm -hmm. or sometimes all they really need to do is just drop it on the access road and kind of shake everything you know drop the mat down and it shakes it off okay yeah because that was just my one thought is this you know they carry in seed pods and stuff yes. like that I think um, near Burns Hill there's a significant water body there now and some of the structures I think are in the water so I was wondering how you were going to do the same Page 10, I had the same question. That's, okay. Thanks for beating me to it, Anne. <laughs> so, yeah, so that, that that's one of those larger wetland complexes that I was mentioning where they're gonna likely have to use the bigger temp, the bigger timber mats um, just, in order, just to make it a safe, stable platform to get in, and the plastic ones will probably just sink. Um, so that they'll, they'll build that access um, with the timber mats um, and then set up around it for the, the soil borings. Yeah, doesn't, it doesn't look shallow. It's yeah, not, no. <laughs> not from the pictures. It will, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. also included on the I include a photo of it. Um, there you go. Yeah, like because that was something. I mean, um, so that that would be my one real prime. You know, when when that work is being done. Um, Might want to come out and visit. Yeah, yeah. That, that that's the one I'd Act, be active with a lot of herons too. Right. Yes, yeah. I mean, it's uh, so. There. So that's yeah. that's a um, would be my primary site visit. The day you'd like to be out. Yeah. Um, I have a couple of questions, Peter. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so, what's the estimated start time for the for the scope of this work? So this work um, encompasses six towns. A transmission line runs through six towns. Um, they want to start at some. You know, the work itself as a whole will start this spring. Um, they, I think they're anticipating it'll probably take about a year to get everything done. So when that work actually lands in, in your town, I, I, I can't tell you exactly at this time, but um, I think once we get a contractor on board, I would have, they'll have better plan, we'll have a plan in place. Yeah. No, again, the, it, I'm just trying to get a sense of, yeah. you know, when I should be expecting or, you oh, know, yeah. if I haven't heard from somebody and, you know, by the end of, by, by 2023 and go, okay, what's going on? Um, Could it be coordinated so that it's it, in this area? It's done when it's not the nesting time, um, like oh, it's yeah. in the, done in the middle of winter or something like that. I think we should uh, try and target that. I wasn't aware this was a rookery. Um, well, the rookery is way off to the right. It, it's not like they're going to be yeah, working. It's, over it's way off to the right. Over there, now yeah. yeah, there's a lot of dead trees that like, the lake, the rising water is killed off, and the birds are uh -huh. nesting in them. Um, and then. Approximately the duration of work in Westford. I know it's a flex, just an approximate in terms of uh, two weeks, a month, two months. I, month. I would expect, that we, I guess to be conservative, I would say maybe like we could anticipate maybe five months of activity. Um, I'm just not sure. Yep. Um, again, it's not nothing to hold, just again for my own, you know, education so I can, you know, make sure we have, yeah. you know, keeping tabs on it. And then, you know, so I mean, with it being in six towns, there'll be, you know, we're I imagine Westford somewhere in the middle, because um, I saw that you have filed in Chelmsford and I imagine Littleton as well. Mm -hmm. um, so when work is going on in the other towns, and you know, when it's approaching Westford, I just you know like to know so we can make sure that all the you know we have a tentative schedule. We mm -hmm. know when when work's being done and. I, I imagine I'll get a couple phone calls from residents. What are they doing out there? So um, it's always just great for uh, resident relations. Absolutely. Yep. That's yeah. I think like a two-week notice or forty, whatever, yep. whatever you want. Condition is, I think, appropriate. Thank you. Any other questions? Good. So we'll continue this to our January twelfth uh, meeting and issue the order conditions. You'll have it done by then. Yep. Okay. So can I have a motion to continue this uh, to January 12th? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, you're good to go. Thank you. Happy holidays. Yep. Happy holidays. I'll send a draft order of conditions be at the start of the new year. Okay. Thank you. Do you have a, should, a, um, should an applicant's representative be at the next hearing? Only if you've got questions with the order. Okay. That's good. Well. Yeah. Good night. Take some uh, macarons on with you. They're really good. Better grab a snack. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, we're going to move on to discussion items. Uh, first one is conservation land at Sycamore and Cypress Road. Jim's favorite. I'm still working on getting boulders placed there. I'm, they will get there. I'm, I'm making headway. <laughs> Good. Yeah. You're, you're working with Steve Cronin? Yes. W was he the guy that had okayed the removal of those trees? Or? I don't know. I, I don't know oh, who. Okay. I don't, yeah, I don't know how. It's a new tree warden, but I don't know. Well, I know that, yeah. And new highway superintendent yeah. or public works, whatever. Right. Okay, 87 Graniteville Road. Potential violation enforcement order. We're going to put this off to January 12th yep. when everybody can attend the meeting. Yes, and just and as he's, an he's been out there. I, so. I was out there. Um, uh, I'll have to look back on my calendar, but a couple weeks ago, um, and took some photog photographs for you know the enforcement order. And again, want to have the homeowner and the. Um, he pulling market. things back. Hmm? The, is he pulling some of that material back the way we asked him to? I. Uh, He's in the process of there's um, some land disputes, I think, is yeah. what's being resolved. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I take a while to resolve this. But, you know. Well, I mean, he's, he obviously is very willing to do what he has to do from our last meeting. Hmm. So. Okay, request for a certificate of compliance, 3 Cold Spring Road, Longden. Yes, uh, this was the teardown and rebuild at uh, Cold Spring and Depot. Um, everything looks well established out there. The wildflower um, meadow w was great for those who passed by in the summertime. I was quite impressed in him advocating other um, projects to do the same. All the uh, language is in the deeds um, and recommend the commission issue this order of condition or certificate of compliance. Okay, motion to approve this. We got compliance. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And the second one is 65 Powers Road, Berger Machine. Yes, this uh, was an addition to the rear of Bergeron Machine on Powers Road. Um, the, there was uh, a couple of the main uh, special conditions was installing boulders at the rear of the uh, property in the wetland buffer to prevent uh, further encroachment with, you know, plowing and uh, infiltration trench, trench was also uh, installed and ever was out there last week. Everything looks to be in good shape. I recommend the commission issue this certificate of compliance. Hey, motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And our last item of the minutes. Yep. Yeah. I didn't see them. Were they? What was it? They were in the packet. They were in the packet. Yeah, they were out. So I'm all of Spain. I didn't look at them. Unless that message. Anybody else have changes still? We're good again. Fine. Motion to approve the minutes from November 10th. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. They went up standing. I didn't get to the Okay. Anything else? No. Is that it for the holiday? Yeah. All right. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Adjourn to the refreshments. So yeah. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.